There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. Well, welcome to Unleashed, Dogs Without Limits. I'm Carl Metzler, and I'm really excited to be bringing this new series to you this year. Unleashed is all about dogs. We all love our dogs. They play a huge role in our day-to-day -day lives, and let's face it, I mean, they're part of our extended families. But during the course of this season, we want to introduce you to some of the most extraordinary and elite dogs and handlers you'll meet just about anywhere. This week, we want you to meet some of the folks that you're going to see through the course of this season. And before we do that, Dave Dorson and John Howard want to share a few thoughts on why we started Unleashed. Well, the, the, the show, like the, like the dog food, was kind of born out of uh, just a couple of ideas. And we, we had a very good friend of ours come to us and was following us on Facebook of all, <laughs> of all places. And so uh, we were posting different events that we were going to on Facebook. And one week we, we would be working with doc dogs. And the next week we were doing uh, military or we were working with border patrol or we were at a hunt event. And a friend of mine came to us and said, it's fascinating the amount of different disciplines that people are using dogs for. One of the, I mean, really for us, the coolest thing about, about the work that we're in and the industry that we're in is just to get to interact with so many people, with so many different kinds of dogs, and who do such a wide variety of things. Uh, dogs are, are, are so amazing and they're, they're capable of doing so many things at a high level. And many of them, we had no idea of people really doing this with dogs. When it really changed and when we really started talking about trying to share that story, was when we started working with our police and military teams. And that's when it got real for us. Nutrition was never a game for us. It was very important to what we were doing, but it was very important because we were feeding our dogs and we wanted our dogs to have the best nutrition possible. When it got real for us was when we started working with our military teams and our border patrol and our TSA, people whose lives depend on the performance of that dog. They can't have an off day. We get the opportunity to see so many things that dogs are doing. I mean, anything from, from obviously we come from a hunting background and people know about police and, and uh, military dogs. They know the incredible things they do there, but we've gotten some great friends in the dock dog world. And, and some of those people that are doing the dock dog world, they've kind of expanded out and doing the sight hound work and doing barn hunts. And it's just amazing the passion these dogs bring to whatever they do and the people that are so, you know, so passionate about their dogs that they're willing to put in the time and, and build that connection through the training and, and the competition that, you know, if you, can, if you can conceive it, these dogs can do it. And it's amazing to me how they figure out just about anything. So we think that this is a neat concept if people get inspired by that, if we have children watch this show and they look at it and go, I want to learn a little bit more about it. I mean, it just tickles us pink when we go to a hunting event and we see young people competing that are 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and you see the connection that they have with that dog. And so hopefully people will watch the show and, and maybe take their dog and try to throw a frisbee to it or take their dog out for a long walk or take their dog and see if it'll retrieve a bumper. I've always been connected with dogs and I think part of it is, I think it's two things. You know, one, they're very bright and they're gonna figure out, uh, they're gonna figure out a lot of different things. So you can see them think and I think we attach to that because we can see that they're, they're, they're almost like people when, you know, with four legs. And the other thing is they're just so pleasing. You know, they want to please. They want to do what you want them to do. You see so many human traits in your dog and you actually see that in some ways they're better than we are because they got a lot of the positive stuff with not as much of the negative stuff as we do. And you know, there's that old joke, you know, if you want to find out who loves you more, your wife or your dog, 
lock both of them in the trunk for four hours and see which one's happy when you open it. <laughs> I don't recommend trying that. <laughs>
they go through the first week and that's the toughest. We tell them in the first week, don't expect to be good. And that takes some of the pressure off of them. And by the second and third week, you, you see it. And, and uh, you can see it in their attitudes. You can see it in the, in the way they're reacting around the dog. But to see them take that animal, that we, we know that animal's gonna do it or we wouldn't present it to them. But to see that guy and know that he's gonna go out there and he's gonna hunt bad guys, he's gonna protect people, he's gonna find the explosives, he's gonna find the drugs. Uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling. And then they, they stay in touch, they send us articles, they send us pictures, they call us freaking out that they, that they just caught a bad guy. Uh, and you can hear it in their voices. And then we save people's lives. I've had many, 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 many hugs, many, many crying sessions with military and civilian alike. Uh, these dogs will save their lives and they know it and they rely on them. Uh, some of the stories that, that we've been told that well, would just make you cry. Uh, uh, the things that a dog has done. Dogs, have, we just lost one in here in Indiana, and the, the dog gave his life up for his handler. Uh, that's that's it's just amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these dogs, uh, we go through hundreds to find the one uh, that will come here, and we do. We did a thousand during the war a year. They're, they're hard to find, but they're there, and they're athletes. They're super intelligent. And we challenge them with things that aren't, you know, we, we use natural things. We pair, you know, their prey drives, their, their defense drives, uh, their hunt drives. We pair that with things that we want them to do. But you gotta find the right dog. And when you find the right ones, they train up pretty easily. And the things that they do for their partners over there are beyond imagination. You know, from the police officers to the military guys, the police officers, they, they put their lives on the line every day just like the military guys do. It's just a different, different situation. But the dog handler goes in first, and we try to really imprint that into our civilian police officers. And they're a force multiplier. They're, they're not going to save you. You still have to be a great cop, and you still have to know what the hell you're doing. But what the dogs have done, not just on the police side, on the on the catching bad guys, but you know, our dogs have found Alzheimer's patients that would have died if the dog hadn't found them because we couldn't find them with people. We had a baby walk away into a cornfield um, winter. Uh, without the dog, the, the baby had no chance. Those are very satisfying issues that, that we, we go through every day. On the military side, we train all the special forces. And what these guys go through and what these guys do um, and what these dogs do to save their lives uh, is beyond amazing. And some of the stories I can't talk about, but um, yes, it's, uh, people ask me why I'm not retired. Why, why the hell would I? I play with dogs with a living, for a living with some of the best dog people in the world. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Just try some. Why don't you head over to BlackRifleCoffee.com and get yourself set up with a Coffee Club subscription. The German Shorthair Pointer is a unique breed. They're very much a canine athlete. They want to give it all to you in the field. You know, I met Steve Reese, uh, I guess it's been about 12 years ago. One of the things that I realized about Steve was his unbridled passion and his, his ability to engage and have fun with people. I've known Steve now again for it's just near on 15 years. He's been a person that's always been willing to help me out with time and, and advice and get out and just put his time in and help, help anybody that's willing to do the work um, become a better trainer and become a better dog handler and even just become a better outdoorsman, you know, just, just be a steward of the, of the land. I'm Steve Reese with Top Gun Kennel here in Iowa. So in our family kennel business, uh, we have three breeding females and three males. We typically have about six dogs on hand because uh, that's what we need for guiding uh, wild birds and then at the hunting preserve as well. 
We don't claim to be the smartest person in the business, but what I will tell you is um, we have pretty high standards as far as the dogs that we like to hunt. Our target is producing a family hunting companion that is versatile, easy to train, very natural, uh, that somebody can buy our dogs and they don't have to send them to a trainer. If they just do the basic commands with the dog and then expose that dog to hunting condition, they will uh, be surprised of how well these dogs take off from there. So I can tell you this, when you're hunting a field with Steve, his dogs are trained about as good as any dog I've ever seen. His passion to really stay true to the, to the breed and to the lineage that he's developed to keep that breed pure uh, Steve has done a great job with that. When these dogs uh, are cut loose for either a, just a family hunting event or for a guided wild bird hunt or just hunting with some good friends, uh, there's a lot of expectations in these dogs. They have to really push through cover. Uh, they're in elements that are sometimes either very high in temperatures or low in temperatures. Uh, they have to retrieve on land or water. So we put a lot, of, a lot of expectations on these dogs with burning calories and making sure that uh, we have a, an enjoyable hunt and we make a lot of memories during the day. The German Short Hair Pointer is a unique breed. Uh, they're very much a canine athlete. So therefore, um, they have a high metabolism. They wanna give it all to you in the field. They can relax in the house. We tell people if you can reduce the maintenance requirement of the animal by good nutrition, hydration, uh, rest, uh, you'll get along real good with this breed. We feed the Kinetic Performance dog food. Um, it has the right levels of proteins, digestible proteins, energy. When we chose Kinetic Dog Food, we were looking for a dog food that we wouldn't have to substitute other products to get it up to the nutrition level where we needed it. So really, Kinetic is a standalone uh, performance dog food that we use here in our kennel. And um, it, it helps us uh, to maintain uh, the uh, body condition, the gut health, the immune system that we have in our dogs. What people uh, uh, don't realize about these dogs is they're very intelligent. They're kind of like that gifted child. Uh, they want to be trained. They want to they want to do something for you. They, they have a strong willingness to please. So if you set this dog back and you don't do something with this dog of this breed, uh, he's going to get in trouble. He's going to cause some frustrations. So we just kind of uh, encourage people if it's teaching a dog to shake, if it's teaching a dog to lie down or sit on a bench or, or do something, it's important uh, for you and that dog uh, when you bring that dog in the house and, and make it a family member. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our Kinetic Supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa upland experience at Highland Hunting. Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. There have been scientists out there that have tried to recreate what a dog does, and they haven't been able to do it. There's no better tool than a well-trained canine. Uh, my name's uh, Donnie Meese. I'm a Cincinnati Police canine handler and trainer. I've always been in love with dogs, you know, ever since I was a kid. You know, we, had, we always had pets. My grandpa uh, used dogs to hunt rabbits, and as a little kid, I was always messing with those dogs. 
I became a police officer um, in 1997, and the goal was always to get in the canine. I had a, uh, my uncle, Ed Ferris, was a Cincinnati police canine handler, and I grew up watching him, and I knew pretty young age that this is what I wanted to do. You know, when I watched my uncle, it was like, uh, to me, it was like he was like the last of the cowboys. You know, it was like, it's like one of the last professions where, you know, the the person, the man or the woman, you know, puts their faith and trust in an animal and then the animal in return does the same thing. You know, the old cowboys used to do that with their horses. Um, I think that the canine profession, I think we're sort of like almost the last cowboys because we're truly reliant on the dogs and they're reliant on us. And I really liked that lifestyle. Currently I have, uh, my current partner is a uh, German Shepherd Malinois mix by the name of Pedro. He's about seven years old. I started training him in 2015. Uh, my relationship with Pedro is, uh, we're close. Uh, I spend more time with him than I, than I spend with my family. You know, all those uh, cold winter nights, uh, you know, when it's slow in, in the police department, it's just me and Pedro in the car, you know. Um, it's just happy to be, to be with me and I'm, I'm happy to be with him. One of the things I think that makes a, a police dog um, extremely valuable is the fact that they are a force multiplier. You know, if you have a, a situation going on, um, on on a certain block or a certain certain area, uh, 10 police officers, 12 police officers, 15 police officers can show up, uh, and that may not disperse the crowd. That, that may not get people to change their behavior. Uh, but if you show up with one police dog in the back of a car barking, and people tend to change their behavior. Well, I think dogs are special uh, because they, they like us. You know, they, they work for us, uh, they are companions for us, and in spite of uh, all of our, our human deficiencies and all of that human baggage uh, that we carry around, they accept it. So I think that, that, that dog's natural desire to be with humans is something that uh, I respect. I know that uh, I enjoy watching uh, the dog-human interaction, uh, whether it's someone walking their pet in the park or uh, a military working dog handler out looking for bombs, a police dog handler out looking for narcotics or uh, bad guys. You know, to, to see that, that give and take, I, I think, is special for the animal. Well, I love dog training. It's, it's been very rewarding for me. Um, I, there, there's no better feeling than identifying a behavior that you want to teach a dog or maybe fixing a behavior and coming up with a plan to do it and then through training and repetition and consistency uh, see that the dog has become better. Uh, to see that the dog has learned the behavior that you that he didn't previously know. Uh, to be able to sit back and watch that is, is pretty rewarding. Well, that's all the time we've got left this week here on Unleashed. We really hope you enjoyed getting to know Kenny, Steve, and Donnie this week a little bit. You're going to be seeing a lot of these guys throughout the course of the season, along with some incredible men and women who are doing unbelievable things with their canine partners. It's truly remarkable what these dogs are capable of doing. But next week, we're going to introduce you to Marshall Merarkey and his retired canine Hurricane, one of the most decorated service dogs you'll ever have the opportunity to meet. So make sure you tune in, but until then, get out there and spend some time with your own canine partners. And we'll see you next time on Unleashed.